Welcome to Arts and Humanities Are Central. I'm Margie Morgan, Dean of the College of Arts and Humanities at Central Washington University, and your host for this exploration of the important role that the arts and humanities play in our everyday lives. My guests today are Terry Brown, Professor of Theater Arts and Director of our new musical theater program, and two first-year students in the program, Lauren Smith and Amanda Karp. Welcome. Thanks for being with us today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us. Good. Uh, Terry, you've been involved in musical theater for a long time. Could you tell us about your background and your current scholarly and teaching interests? I'm very lucky in that department. I was able to start touring professionally with musical theater from the age of 16. And I, I toured across the country and into Canada and across Europe um, for 10 to 12 years in different endeavors and different programs. Um, then I became a recording artist in Los Angeles and I was able to record and perform in the United States in that capacity for 17 years. And at the end of that period of time I decided that I wanted to complete my education and so I did so and now I'm able to teach what it is that I know and that I love to do. That's wonderful. So you were a professional at 16 years old. I was. That's amazing. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't even know what I wanted to major in when I was 16 years old. That's, that's just incredible. Wow. Speaking of major, um, yep. um, Lauren, uh, what are you planning to major in and what are your career plans? I hope to take advantage of the musical theater major that we're getting here at Central. Mm -hmm. And with that, I hope to become a professional actor. And if that flops somewhere in the future, mm -hmm. then I definitely would like a career in theater, be it directing. There's just so many opportunities out there in the world of theater and I'd like to take advantage of that. Great. It's always good to have something to fall back on. Yeah. Your dream doesn't come true, but we hope it does. Thank you. <laughs> and Amanda, what are you majoring in and what are your plans? I'm also hoping to major in musical theater, do the BFA here, and after I get my degree I want to go on and become a professional actor and do professional musical theater and my dream would be to go to Broadway one day, but that's, that's the big big time, so I'd have to be completely prepared to do that. Great. Well, I hope it happens. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> now, you're both first-year students. Mm -hmm. Yes. And why, why did you choose Central? I chose Central mainly because it was in-state, so that was a good choice for me. It was far enough away from home, but close enough that I could still go home and visit my family. And the new musical theater program was starting here, and I found out about that and was really excited that we had something like that here in Washington that we could do uh -huh. without traveling all the way to the East Coast. And also I went to the summer conservatory and that got me to meet all the faculty and I got to do 12 intensive days of musical theater and it really got me into Central, so. Summer conservatory here at Central. Here at Central, uh -huh. yeah. Great. And, and Amanda? Uh, pretty much Lauren? word for word, like Amanda said, I heard about the musical theater major through my director uh, from high school and I knew that's what I wanted to major in, so being so close to home, I thought it was the ideal place, and then the summer conservatory here just sealed the deal for me. So you both mentioned the summer conservatory. Uh, I'd like to hear more about that. Terry, what, was this a new, this is a new program? At it Central is Council? a new program, uh -huh. and we're very, very excited about it. The Musical Theater Summer Conservatory was started as a preparatory program for the new Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. Um, it is a 15-day intensive program where you do nothing but musical theater from the time that you wake up in the morning till the time that you go to bed very tired, late in the evening. And at the end of that 15 days, we actually put up a production and do a full musical review. And so they get acting and singing and dancing intensely for those 15 days. And in many ways, it clarifies for the individuals whether they really want to tackle this as a career or not. Mm -hmm. Because if you are, if you love the art form to that extent and you live it and breathe it for that period of time, um, then you know that you can handle the lifestyle that you need to have and the discipline you need to have to be able to accomplish uh, a career in that field. And who is the conservatory for? High school students? Or? The conservatory is for high school students from 10th grade through college. Mm -hmm. So in the conservatory that we had last year, we had 28 students all from across the United States, from as far away as, uh, from as far south as Texas, East Pennsylvania, 
Uh, we, had, we had people from Tennessee. We had people literally from all over the United States. And we were able to um, come together and, and put on this performance. And it is an intense experience, but it is a very, very solid experience and gives you a very clear indication as to what you want to do. But what did you see as the benefits for you personally of, of, of attending the conservatory? For me, I already knew I was going to come to Central, so it gave me a chance to work pretty much a lot one-on-one -on -one and intensive for 12 days with the teachers that I would be working with when I came here. So it got me in there so they could see my work ethic and how dedicated I really was to this theater thing. Mm -hmm. And also, I got to get to know them and learn that they were amazing too. So that was one of the biggest benefits, I think. And also, just being there and getting to hang out with all these other people who love theater, we really became like a family, and it was amazing. I loved it. Great. Absolutely. <laughs> you too? Yeah, absolutely. Um, besides just being a lot of fun, the conservatory, like, like Terry said, you really understand how much work musical theater is, but also, if you live and breathe it, you understand that you can do it especially at Central, you got to work with Terry Brown and um, Dave Brown and Annalisa Childress and some of the other staff members and it was just great getting to know them and getting to know the program and it was just a lot of fun. That's great. You know. <laughs> a new addition that we have this year um, starting is the Musical Theater Summer Conservatory for technical students as well. And so design and technical students are able to come and they will be able to design the set and the lights and the things that we need to be able to put on the performance at the end. So it's hands-on, it's practical experience, it is uh, foundational really for anyone who wants to uh, have a career in theater and especially in musical in theater. Music. You know, I grew up on, on musical theater. I absolutely love musicals. And I used to, as a kid, I mean, I never did anything professionally, but I, I knew the songs and I sang them. And I always think of musical theater as an American art form. Um, and when I was living in London, I know the English tended to think of musicals as very American. Um, what defines a musical and, and what makes musicals an American art form? Musical theater is an American art form. It was generated here and what we get used to watching um, in musical theater and, and something that could be described as such, it is when music and acting and dancing are put together to have a storyline shown through all the three different art forms in a culminating product. So all the, the focus for all of those three art forms has a storyline that has a beginning, a middle, and an end, characters that are defined through song uh, and dance, and that the storyline is uh, supported by all three mm -hmm. art forms. And it is a very unique experience, and it's one that touches the hearts as well as the intellect of those in the audience. And uh, it is a very, very popular art form across the world. But it is uniquely American. American. And did your high schools put on musicals every year? Were oh, yeah. And you were in them? What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what musicals? Um, well, we, when I was a sophomore, I was the Cat in the Hat in Seussical. That was my first big role ever, and it was very exciting. And then my junior year, we did Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And then my senior year, we did The Boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And that was really fun. In your school, too? Yeah. Hi, um, high school theater is actually what really got me started into theater. I got my first role my freshman year in Guys and Dolls, and from then... I started getting leads in Little Shop of Horrors and Into the Woods, and then finally I was the narrator in Joseph. So it was just a good, good thing all around for me. Now, is this typical? Do high schools across the country typically do musicals? Absolutely. <laughs> it's become probably the most popular thing that, that high school theater departments and music departments do. Many times they do them in conjunction with each other. Um, they are huge productions, and they allow a lot of people on the stage at the same time. Uh, for Peter Pan that we're doing here, we have 53 students on the stage at the same time. We have um, actors, singers, and dancers, and we are able to put a product together that is a collaboration between all different art forms to be able to come out with a product that is appealing for all. Mm -hmm. So if high schools are doing these, it's probably then, uh, it, it makes very good sense for anyone who wants to teach drama or music in a school to have some training in musical theater. It absolutely, like. absolutely. And we've addressed that issue at Central by having a new uh, musical theater education minor 
where um, music students would be able to take certain classes that give them the foundational uh, knowledge that they need to be able to produce a musical at a high school level. Um, and this has become a real draw because music students, as they go through their curriculum, uh, they are not asked to do staging and um, the, the many different aspects of actually putting on a production. And so the musical theater minor allows them to get the practical application and knowledge that they need to be able to take that to a high school. And that's a very, very strong um, employment aspect is if you have that background uh, because every principal every year is going to come to the music director or the drama director or both and music. say we would like you to put on a musical yeah. this year. So does would, would training in, in musical theater also help one in other areas of the workplace? Absolutely. Are there transferable skills that you're learning? That there are many transferable skills. Uh -huh. I would say probably the most important one is, is the art of collaboration because there's nothing that goes on on that stage in musical theater that is not, it, that is done by themselves. You must have a director, you must have designers, you must have artists, you must have creators, and all of them have to work together and, and with a, a focus in mind to be able to put that culminating product together. Well, there's not a workforce in the world that, that where the individuals just work alone. Mm -hmm. Everyone must work together again so that they can have that culminating product at the end. And there's nothing that teaches you better than musical theater for that. Right. It's, that, that strikes me as true. I, I, it, certainly in our college, it seems like theater is clearly the collaborative it discipline. Absolutely you, is. You, you have to be able to work together. And of course, that's a skill that our workplace generally calls for today. So. That seems like that would be good preparation. Absolutely, uh -huh. excellent. Well, um, I'm I'm fascinated by the by the production process. Just you know how you put together a, a, a musical theater production. It must be an incredibly time consuming uh, yeah. process. So, <laughs> it so, is. Um, it now, is. You're, you're, all of you are working on Peter Pan. We are at the present time. Uh, how did you select that particular musical, or why? What there sorts of things do you consider? When there are a number of things you consider when you are addressing that issue of what musical you need to do. In this case, we, we're looking specifically at the talent base that we had in the department. We were also looking at community appeal because we would like to have as many community members feel welcome in the theater department and, and to be able to come to the shows and, and be a part of those things. And so we wanted something with a lot of community appeal and yet we had something that we would have the talent base to support and mm -hmm. also something that would be exciting for the designers to be able to do as well. And also that we would have the musical ability to be able to support that product. And so when we sit down and we work all these things out, we address all those issues and we came up with Peter Pan as being a, a winner for this period of time with this group of students. Wow. So you've got the, the musical selected. How long after that before it's opening night? Oh my gosh, it's a good 18 to 20 months uh, before it actually <laughs> opens. 18 to 20, so we are talking time consuming. It is very time consuming. Uh -huh. Uh, from the time that we make that decision, we then, the, the designers and the director get together and we start planning. So, so what happens? So you've, got the, you've got the selection, what's the next step? The next step is that the, the director will do what is referred to as a concept statement. And a concept statement gives a vision that the, the director wants to have on that stage, uh, a point of view that they want to have come out of the product. They want to address what kind of issues um, that they want the audience to leave with. Um, a concept statement should never tell a designer that they want to see everything green, for instance. Um, that would be kind of boring for a creative individual right. uh, scenic designer, but a director can suggest the feeling that they want to have come from that. Um, so and so then for the example, designer takes what, over. What in your concept statement for Peter Pan, um, what are you trying to suggest to the set designers? I wanted to make sure that all the designers were on the same page as far as seeing the world through a child's eyes. That 
no matter how old we are, that child exists in each one of us. And the point of having Neverland and Peter Pan is that we need to keep this child in us alive. Right. And so everything on that stage, I wanted to make sure would be through the eyes of a child. Mm -hmm. What is it that a child would see or want to see on that stage? And it would awaken that child in each member of the audience as the show progresses. You may feel that it is a, a, a show for children, but it isn't really. It's a show for every single person mm -hmm. um, that they can awaken that child within. And what about the concept statement behind the costumes? The costumes were very much the same. I wanted them to be bright in color. I wanted them to have a lot of different dimensions, fun dimensions. Um, I wanted to make sure that um, they were functional as well. We do fly in Peter Pan. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be able to have the harnesses for flying uh, and have those work with the costumes as well. So there's, how many people there are practical fly? How things. many people fly? Um, the whole Darling family uh, flies and Peter Pan flies and uh, I think that's it, isn't it? Jane? Jane at the end also flies. So yeah. there are five people that fly throughout the show. And are there any larger than life costumes? Oh, there will be larger than life costumes, especially the pirates. The pirates are going to be very, very fun. And we'll also have, it's a very physical production. We'll have a lot of uh, physicality there. Um, and I'm going to save some of those surprises for the production itself. <laughs> but uh, children are physical. And as we get older, we become less physical. And this awakens that in all of us that we want to get up there and play as well. So do you keep tabs on the designs as, as, they're, as they're being formed? Or do you wait until they're done and then No, and then absolutely. Uh, once the concept statement is given, then the designers and I have a meeting and we go over the concept statement and then they go and they do renderings and come back with ideas, come back with colors, come back with um, some basic ideas and we sit down and say, well this, I really, really like this, this I'm not too sure about, what if we, what if we pulled this in, can we do that? And so we sit there and we collaborate until we come up with a clearer idea then the designers go away again, and they come back with other things, and they, it, the entire production starts to be molded at that point. Mm -hmm. So we have, seven we have several design meetings, and then we go into production meetings once all the designs are solidified. And when does the, when does the casting in the auditions, when does that start? The casting usually starts about uh, 10 to 12 weeks before we do the actual performance. Mm -hmm. And so they are required. Um, to come and sing and to dance and to, um, to speak or to do a monologue to show us uh, what kind of possibilities they may have. And, and what are you looking for in those auditions? It depends on the musical itself. There are some musicals that you need to be a more classical singer to sing or there are some musicals in which we have a lot of low parts. Peter Pan happens to be one where we have lots of low singing. Um, we have dancing, um, areas of dance that are incorporated there as well. And so it depends on what role um, I'm looking for as to what it is that I want to see on that stage. Mm -hmm. So in this case, they all had to sing, they all had to dance, and they all have to act. Wow. So what are your, tell us, what are, what are your parts in Peter Pan? I'm actually playing Peter Pan. You're Peter Pan. Yeah. So are you going to have to do anything with your hair? I'm going to have to chop it all off, actually. <laughs> I'm really excited, though. I like short hair. It's a lot easier to handle. So uh -huh. I'm excited to cut it off. And Lauren? Um, I am an Indian, but I'm also grown-up Wendy at the end of the play. Uh -huh. Now, did you try out for these parts specifically? Um, not. We didn't try it for specifically as in we didn't sign up that we wanted to be Peter Pan or sign up for that, but I knew that that was a part that I could play uh -huh. the most out of any of the other parts, so I aimed for that part when I, choosing my audition song and my monologue. I wanted to find something that was Peter Pan-esque. There's not really a part specifically for me in Peter Pan, so I just went in there with the best audition I could do, 
And mm -hmm. um, I trusted Terry to just put me where she thought I could help out most. She is a high soprano. I'm a high soprano. <laughs> and, and so what, and did, you, so what did you come in and do? What, did, uh, what was the tryout process like? What did you see? Well, for the first auditions, we came in with 16 bars of a song that we chose. But we also had to do uh, one minute of a children's story or a poem because we were also trying out for Don Quixote, which was a children's touring mm -hmm. show. So we chose that by ourselves, and then for the callback process, it was a little different. Yeah, we, we got callback for specific parts that time. Okay, so the first time is general, you don't, not trying out for any Everyone's specific on the parts, same level. everybody's yeah. on the same level, and then a certain number, a certain percentage of people get called back for specific parts. Yes, and uh -huh. then you came back, and then depending on what you were doing, you were either, you learned to dance, or you learned a part of a song and had to sing that, and I think that was about it, just a dance and a song. There wasn't any acting monologue parts or anything. But of course you had to act through dancing and yeah. the singing portion mm -hmm. of yeah, it. Yeah, they posted a list out um, on the call boards and said, these people are called back for Peter Pan, these people are called back for Wendy. And then wow. just we would um, learn what those characters had to learn. and we'd. So how many that. people ended up trying out for Peter Pan? I 100. believe the final was 173, I believe, was the final count. Total for ev everyone. Wow. 173. That's more than three. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So this is a long, this is a long <sighs> process. It, it is a very long process, and it's a grueling process, <laughs> and it's a nerve-wracking process for those that are going through it. There's no question of that. And you're taking um, notes on everybody's... I take notes on absolutely everyone, and I'm listening for specific things. I'm looking for specific things, and... Uh, and then when it comes down to the callbacks, they're literally placed up against each other. Um, they all learn the same piece of music. It's usually the hardest phrase that there is to sing. And they, they stand up and they go one right after another. And I sit with my eyes closed and I'm listening to what's going on for that. Wow. Because Peter Pan is a particularly difficult part to sing. So, and so were you surprised at the parts that you ended up having? I really was. There was really tough competition there. There was, I think, 10 or more up for Peter Pan. Mm -hmm. And you get to see everyone else sing and everything. So you're just like seeing who's, you know, who do you think is going to get it. And afterwards, I, there was a couple people out. I was like, wow, they'd make a really good Peter Pan. So when I found out I was Peter Pan, I was, I was freaking mm -hmm. out. Did you get told <laughs> that was, night, that, that very... No, no, no. We, we, we all sit down together. The musical director, the, um, the choreographer, and myself, we will sit down together and we'll go through, and each one of us have graded every individual that has auditioned, and then we go through and we, we make that decision together. Wow. Yeah, I, had, I was actually really surprised with the parts that I got because, like Terry said, I'm a soprano. I consider myself a singer. So when I got Grown Up Wendy in an Indian, the Grown Up Wendy is an acting role and the Indian is a dancing role. So she's giving me a chance to learn and grow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're stretching your, your boundaries. That's yep. great. Wonderful. So then we've got the cast. And uh, you said 56? We have 53 in this cast. 53 mm -hmm. in this cast. And so how long does the, do the rehearsals go on? The rehearsals for musical theater generally last between 9 and 12 weeks. Uh, rehearsing every single day, sometimes on weekends as well. And uh, in this case, we're doing a shortened rehearsal schedule, uh, but intense, very intense. Mm -hmm. um, and we're having a great time doing it. But it is, uh, we rehearse every night from 6 to 10, wow. and on Saturdays as needed as well. So we are, we're, we're coming together and we're having a great time. And then how many full sort of dress rehearsals do you have? We usually have about three dress rehearsals. We have our tech rehearsals before our dress rehearsals. Mm -hmm. The technical um, things are put together. Um, the lighting and the cost, the cost, I'm sorry, the lighting and the sound and uh, all of the technical aspects are put up and we do all of the cueing before we ever put the costumes on the stage. Then we have three costumes. Um, dress rehearsal that are in full costumes and then we go. Wow. And when, when it's time for opening night, do, do, does the cast typically feel ready? I mean, are, are you, are you, or, or do you just never feel ready? <laughs> how do you, you just feel? go out there and do it and how, how's, how is that typically night? Typically in uh, high school, 
I felt usually ready, but the cast as a whole, we were always really nervous how it was going to turn out for some reason. Maybe it was just because it was high school theater, but it always turned out great. After the first yeah. performance, we're like, wow, we really did that, and mm -hmm. it came together at the end. Yeah, even if your final dress rehearsal is the worst run you've ever done, opening night somehow seems to come together. Come together. It's a miracle. There is a, a slight difference in university theater and beyond in that you're being trained throughout. Yeah very very specifically trained and so that by the time it comes to performance time it is you're up there you're ready and no, you're ready for whatever happens you know exactly what you need to do you know exactly what the outcome is mm -hmm. that you want and you're going for that and does every performance feel different oh yeah. definitely mm -hmm. it, it's a lot on the audience yeah, it to all depend on, the audience. on what you have and you very it's very communication between the audience and the cast yeah. so it, depending on if you have a dead audience where they're not really you don't feel the energy as much as you would where the audience is really excited it can com it can change things about the performance the audience gives off an energy and the cast gives off an energy so we play off each other and if the audience has energy and the cast has energy then it's just a great night because it just bounces back and forth and kind of creates an experience mm -hmm. opposed to just watching something and every audience is unique and every performance is unique and so the communication that happens in that specific period of time is unique to that specific period of time mm -hmm. it can't be repeated, repeated. Yeah. it can't be recalled it is that golden moment no. that exists right at that time. In live theater is yes. wonderful. Yeah. Well our time is running out Terry could you just leave us for with a few brief words about the program itself the new musical theater program it is a degree program now is that it correct? is it's a Bachelor of Fine Arts in mm -hmm. musical theater performance and it is um, very very exciting because we are the only uh, musical theater performance uh, BFA offered in from a state institution in the state of Washington and for many years we've been exporting our talent back east and this is a time when we'll be able to use this as a training ground to keep the talent in Washington State and hopefully have it progress from there. Well I look forward to seeing many musicals at Central. Thank you Terry, Lauren, and Amanda for being with us. Thank you for tuning in and um, I hope you'll join us again next time on Arts and Humanities are Central. Shh.